I have something a little bit different here. So you can see I've got a few devices. I've been asked to fix these. We'll get into it, but I've got a few things I need to check. So to start off with, I've got two devices to fix, right? This is the actual timers here. There's time interfaces. You see me doing videos showing me units the same as this um, when I've been doing my project. Now these are not the ones I've been using. These are from different clubs. They're actually two different clubs, incidentally. Um, I noticed I was walking past today. I went to go and do something with this time to go and check it out. I noticed the antenna just fell off when I picked it up. It's actually been broken off. So that's one job I've got to do, but I can't do that until I get the part. I've ordered the part. Still stuck on the end of the antenna there. Right? So I've ordered the part. I've got to wait for that to arrive. So I can't fix that one yet. This one here works with these. These are light poles, like a light curtain. Apparently it doesn't always sense. It just doesn't re respond. So there could be a few things there. It could be an issue with the box. It could be a similar sort of thing where the antenna's been strained. It could have broken the trace inside here. I've had a little look. I've already pulled it apart once and a quick look, but... I was at the event at the time, so I couldn't see too well. I need to microscope and stuff and check it properly, but I couldn't see anything obvious. So I thought, well, I'll look at the light curtains themselves, because these send signals to this unit using the antenna, right? One side's the main brain of it, like the red one. This one which talks to the timer. This other one, which has got the black top on it, this is not as smart, but it has some brains in it still too. Now I've actually just pulled it apart and I found a problem straight away. When I was doing testing on it, I tested each individual LED, so each indicator, so it's got individual ones up here, it's got four of them on this particular one, these are short bars, and it's also got four corresponding ones on this side, All right? so they normally face towards each other, and so each indicator, one, each one, like that one there goes to this one, that one goes to that one, and so on, All right? Now I tested each one down this side, and each one responded. I tested each one down this side and then, oh, but this one responded. This one didn't seem to do anything at all. Something's going on with it, it's not right, but I've covered this one up and nothing would happen. But any other one I covered up, it'd work. So I thought, right, it's got some kind of issue going on there. Anyway, I pulled this one apart. And the first thing I found is that the circuit board is actually hanging off the mount. So you can see here, it's, it's not actually on there. And these like spring clip things are supposed to be pushed in. So let's push those on now. Like that okay that's all now in place so it could be that this was bent out a little bit and not aligned or something like that so maybe that's what's causing a problem certainly possible so what i'm going to do now is going to power it back up again and we'll see if it comes right so i got it back together and i'm just get, still getting some weird erratic behavior from this thing these are still close together than they really should be but if i get something to put like pass through it so i've changed the setup so this it normally has two sets of these poles one at the beginning one at the end so i've changed the configuration so one set will do both So that should have stopped it straight away then, but didn't. So I'm seeing a triggering on here. That's saying it's now blocked. It's got an X on there. And that should have stopped it. So there might be something else going on in the configuration here. Let's wait. In case it's a time-based thing, there might be some kind of delay. So that works straight away. Do this one. That's okay. Try this top one. That's working. The triggers when a certain time it ignores it, unless it gets triggered twice or three times, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's something weird there, but okay. So I'm pretty sure the LEDs are working now. But I'm not 100% sure it's behaving correctly. I've still got this red LED on here. That may or may not be okay. This has got a green LED on this, so I've got the beam blocked and it goes red. That's all correct. And anyway, apparently the problem is that it will work at this distance. That must be a setting in there or something. Two seconds, maybe. Yeah, it might be two seconds. Yeah, seems to be. Right, um, getting distracted here. But apparently, when it's at a distance, it doesn't work. I'm going to move these light poles somewhere else. Actually, I'll, I'll take the timer somewhere else. I'll move this over here. See if it still does it. It does, that's still working. Let's try again a bit further away. Sorry about the noise. Vacuum cleaners, uh, vacuum cleaner, washing machine's on. That's still working. Okay, well, maybe that ball there being loose was what was wrong, but I doubt it. 
could be something else. Well, I'm just trying it now, it's now two rooms away, and that is beeping still, so that's still working. Now, yeah, let's pull this one apart. So, I've got the aircon on now, it's just getting too hot. So, let's take this one apart and let's have a look at this one. See, as I found the other one, they're falling apart inside, so maybe this one's the same. You know, maybe it's a contributing factor. I don't know. Anyway, it's part of the fun. It's a fairly easy to get apart. Because after I've been asked to fix them, so I need to try and be, at least be sure that you know I've covered everything that could be covered. I looked at the other side; it looks alright. So I ring in there to make sure it doesn't fall out. The other one didn't have an O-ring in there, because someone's already been there at some point. Okay, this kind of slides out. Kind of slides out. It's going to be uncooperative. In case you're wondering about this piece here, it's got a reed switch on it. So there's a little magnet in here, and there's a reed switch on the main board, and that turns the power on off by breaking that switch open. Come on. It's going to be awkward. I've said it was too. You know what it is, I jinxed today, I said it wasn't too hard to get apart. So now it's made it a bit harder. Just by twisting and sitting in a certain spot. Of course. Anyway, it'll come out. I might have to just jiggle it a little bit. I'll come back once I've got it out. Okay, it is out. This is what we have on the other side. So we've got some infrared detectors. We have a power amplifier. HPC's RF transmitter. TXM900 HP3 PPO. Um, the other unit of these I've seen, I've seen like a full post version, which is about, I don't know, two, oh, two and a half times the size of these, I suppose. And I've actually got an a SX series lure type, type module in there. So obviously they've gone from this type to the other type at some point. So, yeah, okay. So that's the fact it's wobbling around on that circuit board there. All right, so it's just sitting there floating around. Not secured, maybe it's been banged, maybe it's got some cracked solder joints. Actually, yeah, those joints don't look the best, do they? Some of those do look quite bad, actually. So I'll resolder this whole thing. I'll resolder this module here. And maybe the antenna as well. Oh, that's probably alright, actually, it looks okay. And we'll see if that does anything to help it. Just in case it's that. Because it is intermittent, apparently it does sometimes work, sometimes it doesn't. So, yeah. Interesting design. You can actually see under there, it's looking quite dirty underneath that chip that I see there. There's lots of residue on the circuit board. Maybe it's got wet at some point. It could just be flux residue, but the real the board looks alright. Well, there's a little bit down the middle there as well. And here there's a little bit, but not too bad. Right, so I've put some fresh flux on here. I've got my Amtec stuff here, which I'll use for stuff I want to do a nice joint on. I'm using my silver solder here, so I'm using my decent solder. And we'll just give it a nice flood with that on each pen. And let it flow through. And we'll see if that does anything either. Because it might just be bad joints on this IC here, but it's causing problems with the radio signal. It does seem to be intermittent as far as it's triggering. But uh, I don't trust it completely. I'll open up the timer itself soon and have a look inside that again. Pretty good look. Now it's at my bench. And we'll see if we can get anything out of that as well. And yeah, this will flow through. Definitely flow through. Let's clean this up. Okay, so I've resoldered that, cleaned the flux off. It's all looking nice now. Clean a bit of residue off that is already on here. Now this is mod number 7, which is channel 7 according to the timer. I did a check on the timer, you can program these light curtains with the timer. So you can go to the programming mode and put your hand through the light curtain and when it detects that light curtain triggering, 
it knows which one it is and it tells you which one it is. So it said number seven on the timer. This is also got number seven on this board here, so it ties in. This also, you can see this is a microchip pick, 16C57C, I think it says. I'm not a pick person. I've never used picks. It's just not something I've done. I, I suppose I've missed out a bit there, really. But as far as understanding what this particular thing is doing, well, it's measuring these. It's using a pulsed encoded light for each one, I'm guessing. I could actually check that, but I'm not going to do that. And then that's then controlling this thing here, which is be programming the frequency it's using, that sort of stuff. The other version of these I pulled apart, I think also had a pick in there, but they had a different transmitter system. They used like a law module type thing. So that's very different. Alright, let's put this thing back together. Before I slide it back in again, I just put it back on the frame, didn't I? So there's the frame. One thing I did notice actually it's got this resistor here. It's been taken off and grounded onto that pole. It's a bit interesting. The hole does actually ground on the other side. But yeah, it's a bit of a strange way of doing it. Anyway. I guess that's the uh, channel programming or something. Those two resistors probably set the channels up. Well, mind you, there's some other ones over here. Maybe it's three resistors or something like that used for combination. Set those up. I'm guessing. Now I'll slide it in. Now what it's got, obviously, it's got those screw holes which I have to line up. Now we'll get these screws in. Okay, I've got the first screw in. Now I'll get the next screw in. Making sure I've got the rubber seals on there. Okay, let's get this alignment plate in here for the battery. We'll try it again, make sure it still works. In case I made it worse, not better. It's also possible, isn't it? You don't know. And then we'll do the timer. Okay, check the battery back in. Only goes one way, so you can't screw that up. Turn this one on, you see the LED here. Maybe you can see it. Might be getting drowned out a little bit. Turn this one on. See the green lights come on. And we'll turn the timer on. Let's just test each one. Get it lined up. Hopefully lined up. Yep. It is showing on the display. It's gone back to manual mode. It's got a, like an automatic mode, which will say set one is the start, set two is the finish. And I manually changed that in the setting, but it doesn't store that setting between power ups. Now it's saying I do starts, won't do stops. That's fine. Start. But it's also taking two triggers again. But it's all working, all four lights are working. But it takes two triggers. So maybe that's part of the problem. Well, I'm still not sure about this top one being right. I'm not completely convinced this one's okay. Let me check it again. Yeah, I'm still suspicious about it, I don't know. Now let's check those angles, it stopped there, right? I'm gonna stay standing up. There, is where it stopped. I think there might be a diagonal from one of these other lights. Not that beam itself. Let me check that. So I'll just shut up on my lights here in case it's affecting it. I'm still not convinced. What's this light? Hold on. Because that seems that's going past the direct line of those two. That's seeming better now. That's blocking that direct beam between those two now. That should have stopped it. But there it's topping. That's interesting. Yeah. I 
I'm not sure that Okay, when I'm blocking that top one, it's definitely going off then, alright? If I block the middle one, I can't really say the one is not or one is. I mean, if I block that one, it, it goes off. That is kind of working. But it just doesn't seem right. It's off angle, it's a bit strange. It's like it's sitting low. It's odd, but yeah, I don't know. Something doesn't quite seem right about this top beam here. The other ones look okay. The top one just seems a bit strange. So if I'm running my finger down this beam, well down here, so I cover each one individually, right? So that top lump there is the indicator. I'll just give that one. The next one there is the top beam. I'm completely covering it, and yet it's not triggering. Go down to the next one. It stopped. That's fine. Go down to the next one. It showed. There we go. Taking two triggers. Next one. That stopped as well. Do it this side. That's all right. That side. It showed up. Trigger again. Yep. Trigger it twice. Yep. And it, and it is also showing up. So I'm pretty sure that the the LED on this side here might be dead because I'm covering the LED up. And nothing's happening. Okay, so I'm going to pull this apart now. I'm suspecting there's a bad LED on this thing. It's an LED, definitely. So I need to look at that. Service mount infrared LED. I don't have any. I think, anyway, I don't think I've got any LEDs like it. Infrared? Uh, don't think so. I'm going to get some. So that's not that big a deal. I'm assuming you know, it's not such a problem trying to find one. It's got the right frequency and stuff like that on it. But if I just get a standard infrared, it might work. I don't actually know what I have to do with yet. I might have to get a few different ones and find out which one actually works. I don't know. Anyway, so I get this apart. So I've already taken the batteries out and the bottom cover off, obviously. So that's the bottom cover. So now this just this just falls out. But I've got some some um, rubber rings on here. I'll slide those out. Now I've got to try and get this out. This is a bit fiddly, you've got to get it just to right angle in order to get it out because it's got some bits which are all in the way, kind of gets locked in. You'll kind of wiggle it and twist it and move it. Then you've got to be careful of this ribbon. All right, you mustn't rip on that ribbon because that'd be quite bad. Okay, because that's obviously for the keypad on the top. And there's the module now. There's another little washer on top of the antenna connector. So I'm also going to get this antenna connector here in the circuitry in case there's a problem with that. But it did seem to be registering two hits, so it may not be a problem, but there could be something else going on in this ball. Can't see anything obvious on here. The soldering looks fine. The antenna connector could probably be touched up slightly, actually. That's a bald edge connector. So there's actually a difference between these two modules. These two units are different. Because this one here has got a different kind of connector on it. That's a bald edge connector. And this one is a PCB mount connector. It's got the, the four posts in a square pattern, whereas these are offset. It's a different connector, different board version, so I have to watch, watch out for that. In case we get these into fix in the future. Yeah, I mean, they look alright. I think I'll retouch them anyway. I'll just resolder them. It can't do any harm. Just touch them up, a bit of fresh solder. Could be a, a little crack in there or something like that, or something underneath the board to do it. Could be a, a crack joint on the other side, or could even a, crack, a crack trace on the side. Because these do get pushed a little bit. I'm surprised they actually change connector types. Maybe there's a reason for that. Can't actually see the actual semiconductor on that one. I might be relying on the through hole for that. Also means I have to be careful not to shove too much solder through, otherwise it might bridge on the other side. I could probably take the connector off actually, if I needed to. Let's just put some fresh solder on it and see if that does anything different. Before I do that, let's check for resistance across there. Just did by a check. A bit more forgiving, I think, just in case, because it's RF after all. Nothing that way. Nothing that way. So there's no short right now. So I just want to make sure it looks the same when I finish soldering, in case it bridges. Because I may not be able to see if it bridges. Okay. Let me just get my fan going. It's 
going to take a bit of effort because it's a big solid piece of metal on the other side of this with a big ground plane as well so I've got so much solder on the centre I'm trying to fly across. Nice. Okay. If we can check that, then I'll make sure there's no bridges. Let's clean it up. Being RF, you need to be careful about cleaning up properly. RF sometimes doesn't like it because it can affect the tuning, especially in like oscillator circuits. I've noticed that on um, CB radio work, you know, you know, those things aren't particularly high tech in that way, generally. And um, I've actually seen flux residue cause problems with oscillators, so I know it can have an effect. So especially, I try and be very careful around RF circuitry when it comes to clean up. Make sure I do a reasonable job on it. A few different uh, swabs, a few different goes, just to keep it nice and clean. I'm a bit more fussy about RF. Digital stuff I'm a bit less fussy about, but um, RF I'm, I tend to be a bit more careful about that. Okay, it's looking right. Let's check the other side. In case there's any problems, it looks fine. I just see a silhouette through there. Yeah, it looks alright. So I'm happy with that. Let's put it back together and see if it's changed anything. Could be better, could be worse. I don't know. But as it's an intermittent problem, it really doesn't help. So I've given the inside of this case a wipe down before I put it back together. Get the grit and stuff out of it. There's bits of dirt and god knows what in it. So I get rid of that in case it falls into places that matter. And uh, you know, I could get inside the switch or something like that. It does have a mechanical switch on it. So let's put the O-rings back on there so that can all go back together. Check the outside of the case. That's actually looking pretty clean, so we'll check that in. Go back on. There we go. All the battery terminals are sticking through like they're supposed to. Alright, well, the battery's back in. Oh, one of the one of O-rings fell out. I want. Let's put that bag on. Which one that came from? This one here. Oh, it's a bit of a different thing to be working on, isn't it? I don't normally do this kind of equipment. But I got asked, I, I, it came about because of that other one being broken, I saw it sitting there, you know. I picked it up to change the setting on it, um, in preparation potentially being used, and um, I asked them to make sure the settings are correct, where possible. And the antenna fell off as I picked it up, so oh, that's not right. <laughs> Someone's put that back. Anyway, but apparently they did know about it. It was been broken for a while, apparently, and they hadn't got around to getting anything done about it, so yeah, you give it to me, I'll fix it for you. Um, there is an agent in the country which um, will look after their gear, um, and he actually, he, he often sent it back to America, but he actually discussed with me recently about possibly me having a look at some of the stuff, if it's simple, you know, so. These things, never turn them on without the antenna on, because you're going to damage the transmitters. Right, power that back on. Power these on. Well, one of them's still on, I forgot to turn it off. Turn them both back on. Right. 
Okay, at least we still have that. So it's still working there. That's showing two triggers though. I need to look into that. I'm not sure that's the correct setting in there somewhere. So I'm doing signal strength adjusting on this thing because it's one of the options in here. And it's not great. It's on the other side of the house, it's like only on registering a four, which I think should be higher than that. It's supposed to have like a 200 meter range or 200 foot range or something like that. And I pull the antenna off, and if I look in closely in there, there's like some plastic in it. Maybe some kind of residue in there. Yeah, there's like a plastic film in here. Is this? Probably not because it's not focused. See that? That's what it's pulled out of there. Um, having plastic inside the connector, like this. Yeah, that probably doesn't help. Hmm. I wonder if that is a problem. Well, I hope you found it interesting. I don't have an outcome, really. It works. The range doesn't look right. I investigated the transmitter assembly that's in here, the TXM900, was it? Something like that. You know, it links transmitter. Obsolete parts. Can't get them anymore. So, if that's the problem, then that might need re-engineering by the manufacturer. So if that's if that is getting weak, there's nothing I can do. This end of it looked okay. I've um, checked that out, resoldered it as you saw, and it's otherwise fine. I can't see anything wrong with it apart from the signal looking a bit weaker than I think it should be. But then I don't actually truly know what it should be because I've never done this comparison before. It might be a normal signal strength, but I think it's a bit weak. I might really just have to sort of give it back and say, give it a try and see how it goes. See if it behaves or not. I know that the LED up here is blind, so the fact that it doesn't work, I'm assuming it's blind. So I've ordered some LEDs, so when those come in, I'll swap that out and see what happens. See how we go from there, but yeah. <sighs> fun, fun, fun. Catch you later.